The election is exactly two weeks away, and former Vice President Joe Biden still maintains a healthy lead in almost all the battleground states. However, one major hurdle for a potential Biden administration, if he wins, is the inability to pass progressive legislation without ditching the filibuster. Join us to discuss the election and maybe what we can expect after the election is political commentator Kyle Kalinske, political commentator, host wow. of The Kyle Kalinske right. Show, Secular Talk, friend of the show. Great to see you, Kyle. Good to see, Good to see, you, man. see you guys, too. Good to see you, too. All right, so we're probably not going to talk to you again before Election Day. So just lay out for us your predictions. What do you think are the issues that have predominantly shaped this race? And what do you expect to happen two weeks from today? Well, to answer um, the second part first, COVID for sure is the biggest issue in this election. There's no doubt about that. Over 215,000 Americans dead. Um, and then by extension the economy, the COVID economy, um, which, you know, when you peek under the hood is just absolutely abysmal. You got 32% of the country fears that within the next two months they could be evicted or foreclosed on. Eight million people just slipped into poverty. You had our last jobs report, nearly 900,000 people lost their jobs. So effectively, I know people aren't really saying this, but effectively, we're in a depression because even before COVID hit, you had 78% of the country living paycheck to paycheck, um, half workers making $30,000 a year or less. So, you know, people are really, really struggling out there. And if you go read Reddit unemployment, um, it will it will change you. It will be an eye-opening experience. It will change you from perhaps a you know, wishy-washy centrist into a radical because you'll realize the way we're doing it right now is not okay. So yeah, I, I think couldn't agree more. I think COVID and the economy are the two biggest um, issues. And then if you're asking me for a specific prediction, I have to give the million caveats and hedges and say, listen, this could change by the day. So what I'm saying right now, I'm not necessarily locking in for two weeks from now, but there are some facts that while researching this that absolutely blew my mind. So um, if you were to swing the polls exactly like you did in 2016, in that scenario, Donald Trump would still lose Florida, Michigan by a healthy margin, Georgia, and Texas. This is if you just take the 2016 polls and, and just take exactly what happened in 2016 with the small pro-Trump um, swings going into Election Day. Even if you applied that, Joe Biden still wins 362 electoral votes. And the problem the problem for Trump is he basically doesn't have a path because he needs to win Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and he's down on average six points in Pennsylvania. So unless he has like a colossal, you know, world changing historic swing in the last two weeks, he's done so. There's really no way around it. Yeah, and Kyle, I mean, people forget. I mean, Trump's margin in Pennsylvania was actually only 2%. Uh, Hillary's margin uh, in 2016 was 2.1% in Pennsylvania. And actually, the very last poll to come out of Pennsylvania had Trump up by one, which is about what he won by, by 0.7% of the vote there. I guess what I'm curious, Kyle, you were always one of the you know few leftists, I think, who really understood why Trump won. So where did he go wrong? Was it the very beginning, most recently? Most recently, just that the very beginning has manifested itself? What do you think? I mean, this is effectively the question. And, you know, you're going to hear a lot of wrong answers, but thankfully I have the right one. So <laughs> <laughs> I think so, I do too. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think you do too, actually. So, yeah. I, I, I mean, bottom line, he's just running a bad campaign. So in 2016, his argument was I'm the outsider, Hillary's the insider, I'm against the corrupt establishment, she is the corrupt establishment, she wants to send people to war, I want to take us out of war. I'm going to protect your jobs. In the week leading up to the election, he was all over the Rust Belt basically saying, like, her husband's responsible for NAFTA. He's the one who outsourced the jobs. You know, these people are in favor of permanent normal trade relations with China. Obama, in the lead up to the election, was still pushing for TPP. And so all Trump had to do was go, go to the people and say, they're going to ship more of your jobs overseas. What are you, crazy? Vote for me. And mm -hmm. so effectively, because of about 100,000 votes in the Rust Belt, he ended up winning. So that was 2016. Now we're in 2020. Donald Trump is drunk on Fox News and One America News Network propaganda. And so his main line of attack is 
Joe Biden is a Marxist sympathizer and an Antifa <laughs> lover. Right. And the guy who wrote the crime bill is somehow soft on law and order. And bottom line, nobody's buying it. Now, recently, we've seen him try to change his strategy just a little bit with all this news about Hunter Biden. But they made a, a crucial mistake that is honestly probably going to cost them the election, which is they paired the the corruption stuff with the Hunter personal stuff. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you put the Hunter personal stuff with it means a lot of people are going to roll their eyes and say, you know, you guys are kind of messed up here. What are you doing? So those pictures of Hunter smoking a cigarette in the bathtub, the picture of him with a crack pipe falling out of his mouth. A lot of people look at that and they go, this is really none of our business now, is it? The corruption mm -hmm. stuff, yes, but this stuff, no. And so you got a bunch of honestly idiots who are like, oh, just throw everything we got at them. And they paired the, the corrupt, which is legit, with the personal problems, which are not legit. And I'm sorry, but COVID and the economy overrides all of that stuff of easily. Course. Yeah. yeah, no, that's absolutely well right and well said. And so, Kyle, <laughs> how do you think that this is all going to go after Election Day? We've covered the polling here. You probably covered it on your show, too about the number of people who are concerned about civil unrest after the election, the number of people who are saying, hey, if my guy doesn't win, I'm not even going to buy the results of this election. Trump has been out there saying, oh, I don't know if I'm going to go forward with a peaceful transfer of power. How do you think that this is all going to play out? That's the scary question, because honestly, I don't know. Um, it's possible. The best case scenario is either... Trump wins comfortably or Biden wins comfortably. The last thing you want is what a bunch of data analysts are warning us about, which is the red mirage scenario, where it looks like Trump is up big on election day. And then as the votes, votes roll in, since the mail-in votes are overwhelmingly more Democratic, that it flips and then Biden's up when you look at the mail-in votes. If you have a red mirage scenario, which is possible, it's going to be chaos. Because we already know Trump's been setting the table for months now, screaming that, oh, my God, it's fraudulent. Oh, my God, the mail-in vo votes are fake and we can't allow this. This is unacceptable. They're trying to steal the election. And even if Trump is basically dragged out of the White House, you know, the problem is how many Kyle Rittenhouses are there out there? How many, you know, you only need a handful of people who are insane enough to take action and Trump to send the message to really, you know, make our nation incredibly chaotic. And that's a that's a scary thought. So I think there will be chaos. There will likely be chaos. But the best case scenario is a hefty, comfortable win for one or the other on Election Day. And then you just got to kind of cross your fingers and hope that the hardcore devotees on both sides just accept the results. Because I think that you're going to have, no matter what, you're going to have probably a 30% chunk of the country that's like, not buying it. Uh, I, I don't accept right. this. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's probably right. right. Kyle, great to see you. Thanks Good for joining you. us. Thank you. Great to see you guys, too. Coming up, President Trump criticizes Dr. Anthony Fauci. Again, we're going to tell you the latest when rising continues.